Hey guys, what's up? Carbondale Dota here. Thanks for tuning in, checking this out. Uh, today's video, we are going to be looking at some general things of what to do and what not to do when you're ahead. And this game is a little bit of a back and forth. Uh, if you want to see, we are losing, well, we're doing okay, and then we start losing, and then we win. So we will be on both sides of this. We can look at it from both sides of this team. A little bit of a back and forth game here. And um let's skip to you know maybe like six minutes in just so like we know like the lane is going to be ending soon and to give you a sense at this point in the game you know right around like six minutes all of our lanes are going pretty well but we're not like stomping them either um we're kind of slightly ahead in all of our lanes We've actually uh gone to another lane here left our specter alone uh, our Huskar has won his lane against Ember. Very nice. It's pretty expected. Skip ahead a little bit more. Alright, so we get this tower. And they kill our mid. Unfortunate. And so the lanes at this point have broken down. So what do we do? Uh, the number one thing to make sure you do in this situation is you're still playing for levels and experience. There's... You know, game, at different MMRs, the laning stage will end at different times. The higher MMR you are, the earlier that is. That's partially because high MMR players are better at pulling the most out of the lanes as possible. So they just have more at earlier times. And it's also because they better understand that they can leave their lane and go have higher impact somewhere else. Uh, they understand when their lane, their impact is lessened and they don't feel the need to stay. All that good stuff. So, you know, you can see I left my lane pretty early. I never really went back. Uh, and stuff like that will just happen more often at higher MMRs. But that doesn't mean that we are in, you know, I, I think of Dota as having kind of four phases. There's the laning phase, and then there's this post-laning early game phase that's not the mid game. And then there's the mid game, and then there's the late game. So, like, the laning stage is kind of simple, and then at some point it ends, and then... Uh, how do you play this post-laning early phase of the game when, you know, you're not that strong yet, right? Like, the laning phase has ended. I'm not level 6. My other support's not level 6, and maybe they are because they got the wisdom runes. I don't know. Uh, no, they're not. A lot of people are very under-leveled in this game for whatever reason, uh, just based on how the lanes went. So what do you do in this phase? It's really just, I mean, from a support perspective... It's about identifying where you can be useful without, like, going for crazy dives. Like, you're really not looking to dive unless you feel really strong. And even, not even just dive, but, like, look for deep plays. Um, unless you're using smokes and you have, like, a solid kill combo. So you can see right here, me and this tiny are running towards bottom to try and help Spectre. We're, like, way too late to help him. Also, this Slarder is really strong. Um, but the reason we're doing this... It's because there's not really a lot else to do. My axe is farming his blink dagger, which is very cool. In the jungle, There's he doesn't want to do anything right now. He's farming. And my Huskar is taking this mid tower. I thought he got this already. Maybe he didn't. Um, and so honestly, the Spectres just shouldn't have been here. Like coming back. Like right, the Spectre was top if we remember taking the tower. And then he came back to this lane against the Slardar. He just shouldn't have done that. So as a carry, don't go back to your lane. Uh, once they've kind of broken down because in some cases you can go back like if he was against a just some like non-threatening position three uh i mean you could say like maybe a doom that doesn't have doom or something or like a, a mag who's you know not really going to kill you like you can go back in some cases but if you're going back against a really strong guy who has really strong kill threat and has gotten a lot of farm out of this phase like there's no reason to go back as like a specter uh, he's not good at defending this tower, so that's kind of a mistake. And so you should, you could say that in this scenario, like, we should just be sitting behind our Huskar. Um, we were trying to help this guy, kind of destined to fail. Or maybe it would have worked if we got in here sooner, if they had gone on him later. But sitting behind our Huskar would also be a good play right here, just because we're trying to protect our guy who's, like, playing strong. Um, so their Ember shows up, and we die some more. Kind of commit to this play, and they had another hero show up, so... Uh, but, you know, in the meantime, Huskar doing Huskar things. Um, free farming, axe free farming. Skip ahead a little bit. Um, 
So Spectre has moved to the top lane. I have walked top. And I am looking to stack. My Axe, who doesn't have a Blink Dagger, went bottom with our Huskar, which I find very strange. Um, like, Huskar is a strong hero at this phase in the game, so like playing with the Huskar itself sort of makes sense. But the heroes... Like, if you're a hero like Axe, you really shouldn't be doing this... Especially if your supports aren't here. Like, he should really only be focusing on farming his Blink Dagger. Um, so this is just kind of poor decision-making by Axe. Like, why would you do this if you don't have your Blink Dagger? How is this a good use of your time? Um, and Huskar is the same way. Like, I don't play Huskar. I know he's strong at this phase with Armlet. And in theory, I think as Huskar, you want your supports to play with you and, like, be strong because you're kind of... You're, you're basically the strongest hero on the map at this phase. Like, that's how Huskar is designed. Like, when he's level whatever, 8, 9, 10 with an armlet, he's kind of the strongest hero on the map, right? So he wants to do stuff, but then we've got an Axe who doesn't want us to do stuff joining in, and then me and Tiny who really don't mind doing stuff. Um, and then it's just a matter of where we're where you're doing it. Um, it's like, I'm cleaning up the lane. I could be following my Huskar right now, but, like, these types of plays where you just run into the enemy triangle... Uh, these just say, I am so strong. I am so strong. You cannot stop me from doing this. I'm going to kill you. And really, he's not. I mean, maybe I should go walk behind him. But we've got an offlaner who's not ready yet. He doesn't have his blink dagger. And this support is still in the fountain. So this Huskar, even though he's the strongest hero on the map, is kind of making crazy plays. Like, just because you feel strong doesn't mean your team's ready to back you up. And what happens? He ends up beating. Um, so... When you're, when you're ahead, right? He was ahead. Look at the net worth. He is ahead, and yet he's making a very bad play by playing aggressively in the enemy jungle and with no teammates near him that want to help. So Axe continues to farm stacks now. This is good. Just a little delayed. I'm telling Tiny to stack another camp, and I'm up here going to clear the top wave uh, while my Axe is clearing the triangle. To me, this makes sense. And Huskar's dead, right? So we're not, obviously not doing anything. So when we have downtime, we... Uh, clear open lanes. We sit in open lanes as supports. This is really good. And Huskar TP bottom on respawn to try and defend this tower. Spectre ulted in. Uh, I don't really understand the emphasis on defending this tower. Like Huskar really, really just wants to fight them, I guess. Uh, if you note. Oh, I do have level 6 now. I wasn't level 6 for a long time, so um, that also made it harder to contribute. Uh, but I don't really understand what my team's doing here. The tiny is TP down here to help. They're chasing a support alchemist, right? Our Axe is still just trying to farm his dagger. He, like, just got it. He's low HP. It's on the courier, right? We're just not really ready to, like, fight yet. And even if we were, this is, like, a bad area of the map to take fights. I tell this to my low MMR students all the time. Um, sometimes it's later in the game, but, like, at 12 minutes, right, we've got a Spectre who's, like, not going to sit in front of this tower forever anyways. This tower is not important. We just don't have to take fights up here. Um... Right, they've got a morph like walking around free farming up here to his heart's content. This stuff going on down here is like kind of low skill. Like if we want to make a strong play when our axe has blink down here, that would make sense. But otherwise it really doesn't. And my team flames me here for like not helping them. And like I don't really know what they're doing. Um, this just doesn't make sense to me. So I just didn't participate. Like he's diving a Slardar under his tier one. When axe can't be there, like technically I could TP in and be there. I did global. Um, to try and help. But, like, this is just a really low skill play. I'm pretty sure they all die and they flame me, and I'm like, I don't understand what you're doing. So, this type of stuff you should avoid. Don't go for crazy plays under enemy tier ones, like when your team. It, like, I could be there, hypothetically. They are correct. I could have been there. But, like, our axe was not ready. Our axe is just trying to chill and farm. Um,. Like, this is just the definition of forcing it. If you guys look at one of my recent Invoker... I, I replayed a Invoker mid-Crusader 2 a replay. He, this Huskar is doing exactly what Invoker did. He's, like, just trying to force plays in really bad parts of the map. And I'm just not participating in that. Our Axe TP's in down here to this now dead tower? He doesn't have a blade mail. He's alone. I don't know what this guy's doing. I think my team was just kind of on tilt at this phase in the game. Like, at this phase, my axe is dead, then they start pinging me. Uh, very confusing, very confusing. Uh, but if you know how you want to play, which is... 
which I guess this game in general has been a bad demonstration of how you want to play. So maybe I'll look at another game in a second of like a better demonstration of how this phase should go. But you want to make smart plays around strong cores when your teammates are ready. This Huskar is not given me and Tiny together the chance to do that. And especially is making like bad plays bottom and in their triangle. Like, right, if we smoke and like play this area, that's really good. Kick out the Morphling, kill whoever we find, keep these two lanes shoved in. Axe farms, Spectre farms, and can connect globally. These kinds of, kinds of plays are good. Like TPing in down here one by one to like play with our Huskar while Morphling free farms up here is just not, not the play. And the difference is down here, we don't really control two lanes. Like if we're trying to play down here, uh, we can't really control mid while we're doing that. Um, to control mid and bottom at the same time, you have to be able to play in a triangle which is just very unpractical at this phase in the game, especially prior to Axe Blink. So it's just like not feasible to do, versus if we play around here, this is less dangerous. Um, they have less tower access. It's easier for us to maintain stronger vision. Um, technically, it's further away from their base and all that. So, And to see this concept from the other perspective, uh, I do die here. Um, which was kind of dumb on me, just lack of awareness to like think that they wouldn't like come up here and kill me. Because uh, so much has been happening bottom, but like now nothing is happening bottom. Uh, but then the enemy proceeds to do the same mistake on their end. So they walk into our triangle and start diving a Huskar. Uh, our axe does have blink. Uh, so their ember dies. Our axe does die, but like this is very easy for us to defend. Okay, we lose our tiny. Um... Like, that's not really a good trade for them, even though it's just Ember. Like, that wasn't, like, a good use of their time. They could be controlling the lanes. If they were hunting. They probably would have found the Spectre. Uh, diving up Huskar is not really where you want to be. Uh, so now we finally smoke up as a group. We've got our Axe Blink. This is the first coordinated play we've made of the entire game. And these are the types of plays you want to look to make in this phase. We're not really in the mid-game yet still. We're getting to this mid-later part of this post-laning stage phase. Um, and, you know, I don't think they have good vision right now. We do not have particularly good vision right now. Uh, but good plays are, uh, first and foremost, them being under your tier 1 tower when you have a initiator. So this is a pretty easy kill for us. I use global to secure it so he can't remnant out. And that's just Ember making, being positioned very poorly without the correct information and not respecting what our heroes do. And, okay, they were roaching. Which is interesting, right? They're all up here uh, using Slardar to Roche, getting it on, I guess, the Slardar. I'm sure Morphling was there. Kind of an interesting choice. We know they're all up here because they just took Roche on, but yet their Ember's dead, and we've got a Blink Dagger Axe, and our Huskar's up here, so this should be a good play for us. We don't have Global, but this is also a good fight to take. In Well, in theory, it's a good fight to take. Uh, we get the Aegis. We don't get this Alchemist, unfortunately, and... I'm not really sure why Spectre didn't get in here. A Vessel Charge on that Alk would have secured it for sure. So I think our execution here is just a little off. We do trade Aegis for two heroes, three heroes, uh, which is not ideal, but I think that was just more like bad execution than it being a bad fight to take. Uh, what can you do? Suskar spinning mid. All right, now what do we do here, right? Uh, the game's kind of reset. They don't have Aegis. Um, we're respawning. Me and this Tiny, what can we do? Well, we can try and make a play together. Uh, what You know, walk down here, find what we see. We're kind of strong. You know, if we find multiple heroes, we could be in trouble. But this Ember just happens to be here. And we really get a nice uh, last word into Toss while he's silenced and kill him. So we pick up this Ember again. Uh, they go on our Huskar mid, which is a pretty dangerous kill if you can't secure it. And we just you know, kind of punish them for this play. Uh, we do lose our Huskar again, but they feed their Slardar, who is the top... Well, maybe Morphling's higher than him. What's going on here? No, Slardar's higher than Morphling. So they feed their two of their cores here in the sequence. And, you know, make sure you push out empty lanes. <laughs> it doesn't matter what position you are. My whole team left. Uh, so make sure you push this out. Uh, they dive me, which is like... I think it's pretty wild. Um, kind of trade the Alchemist for me. Works for me. This guy's way ahead of me. We got way more gold for that than they did. Um, 
I mean, I guess that I guess that play made sense for them. I don't know. I don't know if they're happy with that. I think we should be happy with that. So responding to and you saw what my team did, right? Responding to dives they did under our tower. These are good plays to make. Um, notice at no point have we, well, we did earlier, but we're not like aggressively like playing around either of their tier twos. Kind of been a, kind of a swingy game. This is in the they're ahead phase of the game. Like global when I respawn. We're just keeping in to fight around a tower. In theory, this would be a good fight to take. Uh, I think just because they are ahead, it's not going well. But then they eventually throw the game. So what we will want to look for next is how do we proceed to come back? What misplays are they making that they shouldn't be making? So they take our tower. Um, they're kind of diving at tier two. I guess this is okay. We're not really ready to react. Does this Huskar just die here? Yeah, he does. This Huskar does a lot this game. Um, I don't play Huskar, so I don't know if it's like a really, really hard Huskar game or what. But uh, <laughs> he was doing well early. And then I think his like poor plays in the triangle and then the bottom lane uh, before our team was really ready uh, really slowed him down and prevented him from having like high impact. Um, so... I'm just hitting some jungle camps. I don't really think we're strong at all. So we're just kind of waiting. I'm trying to get this Glimmer Cape. I think that'll help. Um, it's good against Morphling. My concern is Morphling's about to enter this game. Um, he hasn't really been a big factor, but like he will be. And Glimmer's just very good against Morphling. Not particularly good against Slardar because he can track you, but um, it is what it is. They dive the tiny mid. That's all good for them. Uh, I think I go back to base and get mana here. And we're just farming around the edges. And when you're behind, what the cores are doing is basically correct. Like, just farm around the edges. Try not to feed. Get your next item. You know, maybe the enemy will, like, overextend, right? Uh, before the next Roshan is up, there's not a lot for them to do if we're just farming around the edges, other than, like, hunt. Um, but people are kind of very bad at doing that in a coordinated way. So this, this works a lot of the time. Even at 7k, definitely at lower MMRs. So we're kind of hanging around our triangle here. And them overextending could be them like walking into our triangle without their whole team there, right? That's what them overextending would look like. Um, so like what happens here? They dive with two or three heroes on the silencer into the tier two. Uh, but what they did not notice, and this is really great by our team, is at the same time, see, this is them overextending. They, they split up and they went in too many different directions. And let's go to free camera. They only put two heroes over here, and have two heroes down here, and there are more flings down here. And they just can't do this. Uh, well, they can, but it doesn't work out. So, uh, they don't kill our Spectre, and we kill their Slardar, and meanwhile the position 5 dies. Which, right, is their second to top net worth hero. We pick up the Invoker as well. So really poorly executed from them. These are the kinds of things you're looking for, and the kind of plays you don't want to do in your head, right? They were just not coordinated enough. Like some people dove the silencer and some people went on the hero's top, right? They were going on the specter, right? Which one of those is the higher value kill? They shouldn't have been going on me. They should have all focused on trying to get the specter if he was an available kill, but they didn't. They split up, they overextended and they lost. Uh, that was a huge kill that our specter got to give him a bunch of gold. That's how these comebacks happen. And then this shortly happened afterward is their morphling, you know? They just we just lost our starter top. I guess partially he's thinking, oh, the enemy team's up here, so I'm safe. But also, like, they're just overextended. They were in top, they were in mid, they're still in bottom. This guy's still hanging around. And I mean, this is huge. This is huge. This kill. This kill is so huge. Um, I mean, this is their top net worth hero now. So they're just like kind of bleeding important kills by like not playing safe. Right? If we go back and look at their team perspective. Right, this is Morphling's perspective. Uh, let's go back a little bit more before they die. So this Morphling is farming, right? He's watching his team. They're being aggressive, so he feels safe. He's kind of still watching. He sees his team die. And Axe makes this play very quickly, which is pretty high skill. But like, he doesn't need to get this tower here. I think he just feels safe and doesn't think he'll die to Axe. He's probably just not thinking smart. But, like, this guy's got all the space in the world to farm here and no Aegis. Um, so all he has to do is, like, not feed here. 
I mean, he's not even looking at his camera. Yeah, he's like, oh, this is a free tower, and then he pays the price. So, pretty low skill there. Um, like, no reason to try and push that tower alone at any point. Just does not make sense. And now we're feeling stronger, right? We've killed their... We just killed, like, all... We've killed two major cores and their invoker. And then they kind of walk into our triangle before their team... Or not our triangle, our jungle before they've respawned. So, like, ITB bottom. Remember we got Global Spectre. Axe and Tiny are connecting here. Or, uh, where's Tiny? I guess Tiny's not. Axe is just going on them. Feeling like a Chad. Uh, unfortunately, Axe overextends a little bit. But I tell Spectre, like, oh, they'll chase up here. Because we just dewarded this ward. Um, so I'm like, when they chase, we kill them. So they chase in. A global. Unfortunately, this guy has a Yules. Uh, Huskar shows up a little late. But the Tiny shows up. We do kill the Ember again. This was after the Axe had already died. And then we kill the Invoker on the back. And then we get this Alchemist as well. So uh, just a lot of overextensions with bad information before their team is ready to play, right? Because Morph and Sardar were still respawning when they're like chasing us and running in here. Uh, this kind of thing will happen all the time. You just have to be ready to punish it, right? Like, I knew, like, I was standing here when my Spectre was right behind me. I'm like, hey, let's just kill them here. And that's just a lot of knowledge. Like, you won't always know, like, oh, we're strong enough to kill them here. Uh, but these are the types of things you should be doing in the mid game, right? Looking for them to overextend and trying not to overextend yourself. Um, it will happen, but we're behind, right? So my team is now coordinated, playing top. For some reason, Huskar TP's bottom. I guess he's trying to finish an item, right? No, he's got heart. I don't really understand what this TP is about. Uh, I guess Huskar just TP down to farm for whatever reason, even though he's got an item. Uh, but we spoke up with the three of our heroes. Spectre doesn't have to be here. Uh, we see them top, so it's like, okay, free kill on this evoker. Nice little catch here. Try and get some wards down. Like if you get a, if you get a nice pickoff here, if you like just drop a ward, it's like kind of not expected. Especially if it's after like they've died and they like don't see you anymore. They're not like oh he's just gonna drop a ward where they just were. But it's really nice to get this deep vision down when you can. Okay, so play is over. We got a pick off. We don't see any of them. Kind of back off to our side farm. Wait for the next play to become apparent as to what it should be. Right. Wait till we see them. Um, their their layout. We're scanning Roshan. We see their Roshan. Uh, I walk into the portal here. I think we're just really slow. Or I guess they were just they do it really fast. Actually. I don't think we're that slow. Um, so we don't stop them. So I push this out a little bit. Now that they have Aegis, it's more like we need to take a defensive fight, or we need to like pick them off when they're separated if we see that they're separated. So like they're showing Morphling and now Alk top on this ward. So my team can go on their Ember mid. Um, and yeah, this guy is not having a good game, <laughs> fortunately. Uh, this Ember, neither is our Huskar, but uh, this is how this is how the comebacks happen. And this 12k lead now is not as impactful as the 12k lead that they had like six minutes ago, right? It means less. Uh, they've got a dead core and they're pushing. This is really low skill, right? Their Ember's dead and, they, and they're pushing a tower. We didn't use anything. They have all our ults up for that. For this, for this defense if we want to make it. So what do we do? We start the fight. So I die right away, but I did get the global off. Uh, there are more things getting really low. We've got all of our team coming in. They've kind of run out of gas here. Uh, and this, this play was just so low skill. It was just so low skill to push this tower while their ember was dead. Um, cannot overemphasize how low skill that is. Um, like they have Aegis, they just have to be patient, and teams just won't. They just won't, and notice we punish with all five heroes, right? They're like, guys, their Ember's dead, they cannot push this tower. They are just not strong enough to push this tower four against five. Even with an Aegis, they're just not strong enough. Um, the, a core is too important to be missing at this phase in the game. Um, and we got all of our important spells off, like I got my ult off before I died. That was pretty much all we needed, so... Really poor, low skill play from them. Really avoidable. This is happening at 7k MMR. It happens all the time in your games too. You just have to be ready to punish it when it happens. Identify, hey, they have a person dead. They can't do this. Right, we're down 12k gold. It doesn't matter. If they're missing, if we're down 12k gold and they're missing a hero with 14k net worth, we're actually up 2k gold in that fight, right? 
Uh, that's how that that's how that math works out. Forcing our Huskar feet's bottom. Uh, we do get some counter kills though, which is really cool. And these again are just overextensions. So our Huskar, I guess, has boots of travel, is what's happening here. So he sees Husk, he sees Ember, TP's bottom, Axe is walking down to connect. He just goes on the and this he doesn't have Axe, Ember's just kinda like hanging around baiting, I guess. Remnants away. Uh, but Axe is coming. They decide to turn on the Huskar, but I don't think they know where any of our team is. Uh, so this is pretty sketch. Axe was walking over, and Spectre connects. Okay, they do get the Huskar, um, but they don't have, like, they still have these. They still had him dead. Alk just respawned. Alk cannot be here, even if he's keeping into Outpost, which maybe he is. He just can't be here yet. And they're just trying to make these plays. Um... And they really have no business trying to make these plays. Like, we have the pickoff lineup. They really don't. They kind of just want to be as a ball um, when they're all alive. They're way more effective. And then they're just chain feeding, right? And this is classic low skill. Like, this is a lost cause. They're respawning and coming in one by one. Our team is, like, pretty strong, even if we, like, lose HP. Um, like, this axe can still have impact. Uh, and they... I guess they do get the axe, but... You know, they lose everything. And I was just fixing our lanes during all this. Um, I died, and then I fixed a lane, and this was still happening. Uh, I wasn't expecting it to because it's really low skill. Uh, a lot of chain feeding from them, and us just being ready to take, like, just to punish these, like, plays. Like, the Huskar team being in here, I don't know if he's, like, wanted to set that up or if he just wanted to screw with the Ember. But, right, they didn't have all their heroes, so the fact that they then tried to go on the Huskar is just crazy. Right, this Huskar is very hard to kill with a heart Sanj. Uh, two Wraith Mans, that's interesting. It's probably kind of good though, just for the armor. Because it's a little slaughter. And so we've got these nice deep wards up. This is the kind of map control you want when you're like ahead. Technically we're 5k behind. I, we don't know that in the game, right? But we're feeling pretty strong at this phase based on everything that's just happened. Uh, with this really great vision, we see the Morphling TP in. Uh, fortunately, we don't get the Morphling, but uh, what can you do? We tried. Uh, fight's continuing to happen. We get some more deeper vision down. That might have been a little excessive. Uh, my positioning here, I think, is pretty good. Just running around on the high ground, making sure they don't get us. They don't get me. And as these fights continue, we just kind of... We're Our team's pretty good at taking long fights. Like, nobody's dying right away. Um, so their Slardar dies, their Morphling dies. Okay, sorry for the bizarre jump. My Dota actually just crashed and I started doing something else. So I'm going to come back and pick up where I left off, but it's probably going to sound a little different because I'm not like in the flow of where I was before. Uh, but like, let's go back to the beginning of this engagement we were just looking at. Right, how does it start? This Morphling TPs into his own tier two while he's got two heroes dead on his team. And we're, like, set up here. And, like, granted, they, I don't know what their vision is exactly. But this is, like, what you don't do to start engagements. Regardless of whether you're ahead or behind, right? Like, in what world is this going to go well for him? Like, his Ember is top. So this is just a really poor play by this Morphling to start this fight. The Invoker feels obligated to help. Because at this point in the game, even if you think you're course doing something stupid, you need to help them anyways. Um, and right, we, we kind of saw how this went, um, kind of started, uh, Invoker dies, lots of stuff happens, um, but like, right, the Morkling TP'd in to his tier two, like, he could have just waited for his teammates to respawn, he could have, like, farmed a jungle camp or two with his TP up, and, like, just waited, right, we were gonna get a tier two, but, like, the game wasn't over, and then they just, like, kind of forced a fight, and we completely cleaned it up. And their 12k net worth lead, or whatever it was up to, is just gone. Now we're in the lead. And how do we close out this game and not throw? Well, we just kind of got to wait for our whole team to be closer together. So, like, I've gone to base reset, and I'm now coming back out as soon as I can. You could argue that my team like, really shouldn't be, like, ready yet. Right? Spectre can always contribute. Like, they're playing a little defensive, right? They didn't, like, start fighting the Slaughter right away before I got here. Um, got to just be make sure you're, like, ready have your whole team near you. That's how you take good fights in the late game. At this point, the starter is really behind. He never got a BKB. So not too much that they can do. 
um, at this point. They're just, and I think maybe they just had a hard time switching their mindset of like from being ahead to like being behind, um, right? But like they were still trying to defend this tier two once we had all reset, right? They just respawned and we had heroes here and they like just tried to kind of walk in and fight us, right? If they wanted to like do something, they should like smoke up as a team, making sure they have all their spells and items up. Um, I guess they don't really have any long cooldowns that they have to worry about on their team. Um, like, right, the Slardar could have tried to finish the BKB, and then they could have tried to fight us. And l like, let us take their Tier 1, or Tier 2, I mean, and they could have, like, you know, split us out a little bit, and then, like, came back, farmed, smoked up once they got the item. Like, this would be a reasonable way for their team to, like, try and come back in this game. And instead, they kind of just continually let us run at them and they run at us and we are stronger at this point i mean you could argue this game is like even right like this game shouldn't necessarily be over right away we'll see the last couple of moments of this game i mean technically the enemy team could still come back here right we haven't even taken a racks yet this game is not over i'm talking about it as if it's over because i know it's almost over but um right this alks outside this base showing on a lane against a specter who's massive he just can't do that as a support. Stupid cat. Um, right. They got their Tormentor, which I guess is cool. Um, right. When you're behind like this, you really just need to like kind of smoke play and play division and look for a pickoff, right? And they're they kind of just don't do that. That's what they should look to do at this phase. Um, you can't just, like, run your head into the wall over and over again. Or, like, just defend high ground, right? Like, don't come out of your base unless you want to defend high ground. Like, we're going to have to push high ground at some point, right? This engagement kind of starts outside their base, and they're just like, oh, yeah, let's just do this. And, uh, granted, then it gets in their base, but our Huskar does die, so that's, like, kind of good for them. Then they chase out. Our Spectre is, like, kind of massive at this point, which they have to respect, which I guess they do. Pushing up the lanes, trying not to show. Okay, I'm showing. This is pretty psycho by me. I should probably just die for this. If they, like, smoked and were looking for anything, like, they would they would just kill me. Uh, but they don't, because they're not looking for that. I don't think they smoked once this game. And then... I I don't know what this is. This is Morphling kind of throwing again. Uh, but we broke his Lincolns. Okay, like, he got out, but his Slardar came to help him, and his Slardar... Okay, I died. The Slardar doesn't get out. Not a good trade for them. Uh, the Tiny also dies somehow. Where'd the Tiny die too. The Alk, I guess. Um, so kind of reasonable for them, but really not because they lost a core and we just lost supports, which just doesn't matter. So yeah, now we got the Aegis, and now we're just we're just really strong. Push up the lanes. Don't do anything crazy alone. Trying to like show on advanced waves when you're alone, like kind of dangerous for us to be showing up here. Like, granted, they don't know where our team is, so they have to respect that. Like, they can't know our tiny's not here because they don't have perfect vision. Uh, our spec goes on them. Tiny's still not here, so you could argue this is a little advanced, but uh, we had pretty good vision here, so and we felt really strong. And here the game just ends. So hopefully that was helpful for you guys. You could see like the different back and forth and mistakes that were made about how to play. Um, we were focused a lot on that post laning phase and how it's really bad to take fights down here. And like the Huskar playing strong when he just doesn't have his teammates to back him up. Um, and then the team trying to defend this bottom tower over and over, which didn't really make sense. Uh, let, let that let them get their lead. And then they threw it away by playing aggressively in our triangle, trying to dive and take weird fights, which just did not really work out for them. Um, and then again, this fight sequence down here that happened where... We had lost a hero, but then they chased into us, and then we took some good engagements there. Uh, just really overextending and not not respecting like what you can do when you don't have certain heroes. Um, and then a lot of sequences of them like chain feeding, coming in one by one, uh, not taking any coordinated plays. Like I don't know if these guys like used any smokes this game. It feels like they didn't. I guess somebody was buying them, but like they never like smoke play ganked. It felt like um, so those types of plays are really good and we didn't really either i guess you could say um but we once once we got past that like post mid game and the huskar stopped like throwing um 
it was really them forcing the issue, making it easier for us to respond. Like the other team's the one forcing the issue and then doing it poorly. It's easy to respond and punish that versus like when you're like smoking and doing it in a coordinated way, it's much harder to respond and punish that because usually things happen so fast, right? If they're all together, whatever kills they're going to get are quick. And then there's nobody else getting picked off in another part of the map. Like remember when the Slardar died here because they dove me mid and then the Morphling died two seconds later to the Axe, right? This kind of stuff doesn't happen if you're all together. Uh, you don't get picked off one by one around the map. So hopefully that was helpful for you guys in kind of understanding like what to do, what not to do uh, in that phase in the game. Uh, let me know if you have questions. And uh, thanks for watching. Really appreciate everybody who enjoys the channel. Uh, let me know if you have more ideas. The idea for this video came from somebody suggesting it on the dis on my Discord server. So uh, if you have got more ideas, leave a comment or join my server. I've got a content discussion channel and you can leave ideas for what I should do. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, sub to the channel. And if you want to be coached by me, check the link in the video description. You can join my Discord there and there's all the information there on how to sign up.